Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a sincere pleasure to be here, and I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, the question that was asked, do you work indoors? Any question related to work always gets a visceral reaction out of me because I think of my dad, who once I told him that I was going to go into to do social work, he said, well, my son, at least you'll never have to work for a living. <laughs> so, <clears throat> However... Um, yeah, so what I'd like to do this afternoon, uh, some people here may be already familiar with the program Age-Friendly Newfoundland Labrador. What I'd like to do is talk a, about age-friendly a little bit, I guess, on the philosophical level, uh, not too much, but then also on the very practical level in terms of how it's happening here in the province. Do I have to point it at the screen like a TV or it can go to... Oh, lovely. Okay. Um, the other thing that I'll say is that none of the information that I'm going to share here this afternoon is necessarily earth-shatteringly new, or you know, no one, you know, you're all seated, so no one's going to fall on the floor with shock. These are there's a lot of practical knowledge in here, but um, I guess the best way to put it, I like analogies. So the best way to describe age-friendly in terms of an aging population is like a lens a glass lens that you lay over something. So the ideas, some of the ideas behind the age-friendly movement, and I'll put it in context for you a little bit, um, very much offers policy planners and builders and community developers a lens through which to look. So a little bit of context. Again, not surprising to know that we live in an aging population. Uh, our province in particular is aging at uh, a very, very high rate. And we see the sim a similar trend right across the country and as well around the world. And these are some of the words that the United Nations use to describe that trend. Unprecedented, it is per pervasive. Profound implications, very profound implications, certainly for the lines of business that all of us are in, for us as individuals, for our families, certainly for our communities in terms of planning. So some of the reasons why we're, we're getting older. Um, of course, increase in longevity. Medical technology is better. Generally, we're living longer. People are having less children. And there's intermigration as well. In our province in particular, of course, in Newfoundland and Labrador, we're seeing a fair amount of out-migration with some employment trends. I just wanted to include a few statistics here because it's been proven that Boredom improves digestion. No, sorry. <laughs> no, no. Um, again, this is just a little bit of context, and everybody loves stats. 96.4% of people know that. <laughs> so this is just to give you a sense of where we're heading just in the province in terms of our aging population. So again, just to put it in context. So the idea of being age-friendly is certainly relevant strictly from a chronological perspective, but as we'll see, it's much more than that. The whole age-friendly initiative goes back to, uh, I should, I was taught in English always, never to use an abbreviation without the explanation afterwards. That's not the band, the WHO. That's the World Health Organization, but you probably already knew that. So the whole philosophy of age-friendly builds on the work that was started a number of years ago by the World Health Organization when they looked around the world and started to ask the question, what makes up an age-friendly city? What does that mean? I included the link there as well because this information will be available on the conference website. So, so the World Health Organization defines age-friendly environment. Well, they looked at their program. It started as an international effort to address the environmental and social factors that contribute to active and healthy aging in societies. Some of their rationale, again, just a little bit of context. And yes, I was going for the record for how many words you can fit on one PowerPoint slide. <laughs> but again, just another little bit of context. So in 2000, the global population of people aged 60 and over was 600 million. By 2025, there will be 1.2 billion. And by 2050, almost 2 billion. And I want to highlight the last point, which we all know intellectually and in which we do our very best to actually live, but uh, seniors do play a very crucial role in our communities and need to be included in planning. And like one of the speakers said earlier, it's almost like bookends. If planning is appropriate for seniors in, in your community, then it's suddenly a lot more accessible and friendly for other people as well. Age-friendly doesn't mean seniors friendly and let's make things nice for seniors and everyone else is forgotten. Age-friendly is a continuum, and it's a process. 
and there's a couple of other uh, World Health Organization resources there. The second one here references a, a, an age-friendly cities checklist, and there's a, a local version of that, which I'll talk briefly about. So they define an uh, age-friendly community is a place where policies, services, and structures related to the physical and social environment are designed to support and enable people to live in a secure environment, enjoy good health, and continue to participate fully in society. So just to bring it a little closer to home, in September of 2006, the federal, provincial, and territorial ministers who are responsible for seniors endorsed what's called the Age-Friendly Rural and Remote Communities Guide. Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Uh, the goal was to better understand how smaller communities uh, can become age-friendly because there was a realization by this, the federal, provincial, territorial ministers, or abbreviated FPT, that for a lot of Canadians, the, the reality of living is in rural or remote communities. So Newfoundland and Labrador participated in the development of, an age, of that guide. A couple of communities are highlighted there. Again, last little bit of context, the, the whole age-friendly idea fits very well into the province's uh, provincial healthy aging policy framework. Uh, and just to end, a number of you in the room may be familiar with that. Uh, but the vision of that framework is for individuals, families, communities, and society as a whole to foster healthy aging in order to achieve optimal health and well-being. Uh, and one of the goals of that framework was to look at creating a more age-friendly province. And I will put in a plug as well for the fact that we're just about to enter the planning phase for phase two of the healthy aging, of the, uh, uh, healthy aging policy framework in the province. So the guide itself, and out in the break area, um, there's a table that I have set up there, and there are some copies of the guide, and it's available online as well. It was actually released in 2007, and it's been fairly uh, circulated throughout the province. The guide itself, in practical terms, and this is where it becomes a bit of a lens, is that it talks about eight spheres of intervention, and these are here. So in terms of the community assessment piece or looking at how age-friendly a community is, it looks at it in these particular areas. So as we can see, like for those who are involved in community planning or anything like that, it's very relevant. So the guide itself is a useful tool. It actually uh, provides some uh, focused discussion. It also lays out sort of how to do a little bit of a community assessment. And it also lays out five phases. Um, actually, just before I do that, I'll set some uh, provincial context for it. Here in the province, how we have the age-friendly program rolled out is actually through a grant program at the moment. So we currently have 20 municipalities throughout the province who have received what we call an age-friendly Newfoundland and Labrador grant. And we're just getting ready to make the launch again for this year's announcement of the same grant program. We're optimistic that that's going to happen before Christmas. So that got, what happens once a community receives one of these grants, really that's almost foundational money or seed money. It isn't that a community is handed $10,000 and then has to have a totally age-friendly plan or move through all of these phases in the guide. The guide lays out five phases. As I said earlier, age-friendly is a process, not a product. And the hope with the seed money in the first year of the grant is that communities would actually at least get through the first phase, if not into the second phase. And that's the quick version of age friendly Newfoundland and Labrador. But I, I should say just one other thing, though, about the provincial context. Half of the grant program is for municipalities. The other half is for seniors, organizations, retiree groups, and 50-plus clubs. So that will be part of the same rollout announcement as well. The key difference, without getting into too much detail, the community grants are focused more around expanding existing programs or doing one-off type programs for seniors. The community-based grant is more along the lines of getting into the rural and remote guide, more of engaging the entire community, including municipal councils, municipal leaders, 
getting an age-friendly group together to look at how do we as a municipality or as a community assess ourselves in terms of age-friendliness. Um, this activity is happening. It's not just limited to grant recipients in the province. It is happening from just neighbor to neighbor, and uh, word is spreading throughout the, the province about it. So it's a very interesting initiative, and I would love to talk to any or all of you about it in more detail, and my coordinates are there. Thank you.